Stuart again from Berkshire Guitar Amplifier Repairs. Today we're going to be looking at how to bias the Fender Blues Junior Amplifier. I want to say straight away that this is not an easy amp to bias. Fender have not provided a bias pot or any place to measure the bias current. I have no idea why but that's just how it is. So only attempt this if you're feeling fairly competent. As you know there are high voltages inside these amplifiers and we're going to be measuring on some very high voltage terminals. So um, take all the precautions and only do it if you feel confident. So let's get right onto it. I'll take the back off the amplifier and I'll show you the fixed resistors you have to change if you want to uh, adjust the bias on this amplifier. I'll also show you where to measure using an ordinary um, digital voltmeter with a 200 or 2 volt scale. So I'll join you in a minute when we have the back off the amplifier. Well, I now have the back off the amplifier. Uh, there we are, a view inside. Um, I just want to show you this uh, neat little Eurotubes bias probe that I've got, which does EL84s. It connects to this box here, and it shows you the plate voltage and the uh, sorry, the plate voltage there and the tube current there. Um, you won't have one of these, so uh, don't worry. But I just wanted to show it to you. It's such a, a neat device. I'm just going to turn on the amp now and um, I've turned the amp on already and I know the bias is, is wrong on it. So let's just have a look what it's doing. The plate voltage is 350-ish, 340 and the bias current is increasing rapidly, rapidly look 50, 55, 60 milliamps. I'm going to turn it off. That's double the um, current that it should be. It should be about 33 milliamps. So the bias is is uh, wrong on this amplifier. Okay, now let me show you the key place to adjust the bias on the amp and then in a moment I'll show you where to measure. So the key here is um, these two resistors here which on this board are marked R51 and R52. However, on different coloured boards, you'll find that they are marked R37 and R31, which is very confusing. So, if you have your pen and paper ready, I will tell you what you need to do. If you need to reduce the bias current, which is what we want to do on this amplifier, then we need to reduce the value of R51 or R37, if that's the version of this amplifier you have. To reduce a resistor we just need to add one in parallel across it and that of course makes our life easy. We don't want to be removing these resistors and trying to put new resistors in. If you want to increase the bias current you need to reduce the value of R52 or R31 if that's the version of the board you have. So just to be absolutely clear here it's these two resistors here we're interested in, which on my board is R51 and, um, and R52. And because I want to reduce the bias current on this amp, because it's too high, I'm going to reduce the value of this right-hand resistor here, which is R51 on my board. And to do that, I'm going to um, tack another resistor across it and reduce its value. But before we do that of course we need to be able to measure the bias current. So let me tell you how to do that without a bias meter. What you're going to do is to clip the leads of your multimeter and we're going to be reading about 2.5 volts so set whatever sensible range that is on my meter that's a 20 volt range it might be slightly different on yours and we're going to clip one of the leads to this red wire here this red terminal here which is marked P2 and we're going to clip the other lead to this brown wire here 
that's marked P3 on my board. So we're going to, just to recap, we're going to hang the multimeter from there to there. And we're going to measure the difference, the voltage difference between those two points. Now I want to be very clear here, and you have to be very careful. Each of these terminals is at about 300 volts DC. And that will kill you stone dead if you touch it. So although we're going to be measuring only a couple of volt difference between these terminals, each terminal is at 300 volts. So, for example, this terminal will be at 300 volts and this will be at 302.5 volts, which is, you know, 300 volts near as damn it. And uh, those, by the way, uh, it, that is the output uh, transformer, which, as it happens, has a resistance of about 100 ohms. So we're measuring a voltage across 100 ohms, and that will give us the current through the output transformer, and hence the current through the tubes. So 2.5 volts across 100 ohms is um, 25 milliamps. If it was 3 volts difference between those two, it would be 30 milliamps. Okay, so let's um, let's go ahead and get uh, get the meter clipped on, and we can see what's going on. So here is my multimeter, and as you can see, I've got the two probes either side of it separated by the actual multimeter. I've got two crock clip leads, a red and a black, going up to the board. One of them is clip clipped on here. That's P2, the red terminal. You can probably just see it clipped on there. And the other one is clipped onto the brown, which is P3. Again, you can probably see it clipped on there. Now, let me just say it once again. Each of these leads is at 300 volts, approximately. The difference between them is just a couple of volts, but this is at 300 volts, this is at 302 volts or, or whatever. So don't be touching any of these crop clips here or these leads. I've got the meter set to 20 volts because we're going to be reading about 2 or 3 volts. And remember 2 volts will be 20 milliamps, 3 volts will be 30 milliamps, and that's the current through one tube. Uh, we'll call it the, uh, the brown tube. If you want to measure the current through the other tube, you just unclip this lead from the brown and clip it over here to the blue. Leave the red one in place. And this will measure the current in the second tube. But if you, you can check that if you like, but if you've got a matched pair of tubes, you only really need to set the current through one tube. The other thing I want to say is that this method of measuring the bias is quite quick and dirty. It's not very accurate. It's not as accurate as a bias meter. But if you don't own a bias meter, you can set an approximate bias using this method. I'm going to go ahead now and turn the amp on. I've, this particular amplifier is pulling way too much tube current. It's pulling nearly 60 milliamps. And um, so I've got the amp on a variac and I've got the voltage turned down just so that I can demonstrate all this to you without overheating the tubes. So what you'll find is the, um, the plate voltage is a little bit low. OK, I've got the amp switched on, and as you can see, the voltage is starting to come up on the meter. 0.3 volts. Uh, 1 volt will be 10 milliamps. So we're just coming up to 10 milliamps now. There we go, 1 volt, so that's 10. 1 volt across 100 ohms is 10 milliamps. So we are now up to 14 or 15 milliamp tube current going through one tube. And we'll just get it, let, let it uh, fully warm up. Remember, I've got this amp on reduced mains voltage at the moment. I just want to demonstrate how this all works to you. Okay, that, that looks like it's settling out at about maybe 19, 19, uh, 1.9 volts, which is, which is 19 milliamps. But have a look over here where I've got a proper bias meter set up. You can see we've got quite a low plate volts of 240. That's because I've got the variac turned down. But we've got 27 milliamps going through the tube, not 20 
milliamps, which is what this now says. So as you can see, there's like a 7 milliamp difference between these two. This is the more accurate one, of course. And the reason for that is it's not exactly 100 ohms um, through the output transformer. So you can see it's quite a quick and dirty way of setting up the bias. It's now up to 22 milliamps. It won't get a lot higher than that. 22 milliamps on there, 29 milliamps on here. So as I say, we've got a 7 milliamp difference. So this will allow you to roughly set the bias. And the bias current isn't super critical. You want it to be about right. Right, now I'm going to turn off the camera and um, I'm going to get hooked up to uh, to reduce the bias current through this amp and that means I can turn the Varec up full and we can do a proper test. Well, would you believe it's been a couple of days since I made that previous segment? When I went to bias the amplifier I just couldn't do it. The bias was all over the place and on one of the valves it was steadily increasing. One valve was fine. And I found a very, very tricky fault on this amplifier to do with the bias. Um, I won't bore you with the details now. Suffice it to say I've spent about five hours repairing this amplifier, tracking an extremely difficult fault which required me to take out this top board um, which is not an easy feat on these amplifiers. Um, the bias current has now come down to a, a bit more of a sensible level. I was a bit bugged by how high that bias current was when I showed it to you last. Um, and that was due to this, this bias problem. I've also been having a little bit of a think about the discrepancy between what I call the quick and dirty method of measuring the bias using the multimeter and using a proper bias probe. And of course it occurred to me that the, the discrepancy must be because the resistance of the output transformer primary winding isn't exactly 100 ohms. It's 100 ohms give or take. And I measured it on this amplifier and of course it's different to 100 ohms. In fact it's 92 ohms. So I hope you don't mind. I'm going to do a little bit of um, uh, ohms law with you and just explain um, why we have this discrepancy. I hope you find it interesting. Well, this may be a little more detailed than you signed up for, but what the heck, let's do it anyway. Okay, here's the situation. Um, this is the primary of the output transformer. Here's the secondary of the output transformer. And of course, the loudspeaker is attached to the secondary. Here are our three wires inside the amp, the blue, the red, and the brown. Um, if you remember, we were, we were going to connect our meter across the, the red and the brown, um, which would measure the current through this tube here, this EL84, one of the output tubes. I've only shown one. The other one is hanging off this blue, blue wire here. So I measured the resistance of this half of the um, output transformer, and it came out at 92 ohms, not 100 ohms. So let's see how that translates down. Um, I think I'm going to aim for a 30 milliamp bias current when we finally bias this amplifier. 30 milliamps through 92 ohms while well, using Ohm's law, V equals IR, voltage is current times resistance. We just plug in the numbers. Current is 30 milliamps, which is 0.03 of an amp. Resistance, as we said, is 92 ohms. 92 ohms, out comes 2.76 volts. Okay, now we're ready to measure the bias. We're all set up. Let me just show you a couple of things to remind you. Um, the multimeter is clipped to the red lead. The um, other side of the multimeter is clipped to our brown lead just about see that there. And that comes down to our multimeter which is on DC 20 volt scale. On the same valve I have the bias meter which comes down and we can check the plate voltage and bias current on there. And we're looking for um, 30 
milliamps, which is a bit hot by the way. I might back that off to 25, but for the moment, for our calculations, let's, let's set 30 just to show you how to do it. Now, in order to change the bias, I have tacked on across our resistor R51. That's the one we want to reduce the value of in order to reduce the bias current. And uh, that comes down. And look where it goes to. I've got myself a neat little resistance decade box where I can just dial in different resistances. I don't expect you to have one of these and you're just going to have to crock clip in various resistors until you get the right one. Um, I've already set it up to uh, to be about right and I've got 140k um, which I which uh, the nearest value is 120k. I'll tack a 120k resistor permanently across that 33k resistor um, when we finish. But let's just have a look for the moment and see how this does. I'll turn it on. Um, there's our plate voltage, 350 volts. And as the amp warms up, you can see the currents are coming up on both both our measuring devices. So we're aiming for about 33 milliamps here. And if you remember, that translated to 2.76 volts on here. <coughs> so let's have a look. I can already see it's going to be a little bit high, but um, not too bad. So the valve's warming up to its proper temperature. And um, as you can see, we've got 32.5. That will creep up to 33. And we're up to 3.04 on. Well, that's it, really. Um, we've biased this amplifier. All that remains for me to do is to tack a uh, you know, 120k resistor across. Across, um, where are we? Across, across here across that resistor. Um, I'll do that and then I'll just quickly show you what I've done and um, that's job done. It's been a bit of a marathon this amp. Um, I spent many hours on it but that's how it goes sometimes. Okay I'll catch you in a minute when I've done that permanent modification. Right well in the end I did decide to go for the 25 milliamp bias and so I ended up putting a 68k resistor across the exist existing 33k. And if we go down to our bias meter, you can see we've got, well, 26 milliamps, which is fine. Well, every now and then I get an amplifier, which is a right little so-and-so. And this amp here is a good example of that. I probably spent five hours of hard fault finding to get this amp back up to scratch. So I'm sorry if the uh, how to bias the Fender Blues Junior video was a little bit longer and a bit more in depth than you were expecting but I also hope that uh, you enjoyed following me through on um, on the live fix. This is one of the hardest amplifiers to bias. I have no idea why Fender didn't add a bias pot on the board. Um, as you can see it's a right mission. Well um, I hope you've enjoyed the video anyway and I'll catch you on the next one.